Okay, we're in the home stretch now. This is uh, question 51, and we want to find some average rates of change. So from 97 to 99, remember this is really just uh, same concept as slope. Uh, the rate of change between two points. So 97 to 99, 97 to 99. Um, so the output, uh, this, you know, using slope formula, uh, we do 765, that's y2, minus the 660, 1999, minus 1997. So 765 minus 660, that's going to be 105. And this is three years, right? 97, 98, 99, two. 97 to 99, if we subtract those two, we get two. Two years. So this is going to be 52 point five, and uh, doesn't say about rounding or anything. So we'll just we'll put that in as a 52 52.5. What is the average rate of change in number of living wage jobs from 99 to 2000? And again, this is just, uh, we'll do the same thing, only we'll do it for two different points. Okay, so we'll use, this is the first point, that is the second point. So again, we use our slope formula, take the y2 minus y1, and the x2 minus the x1 99 to 2001 is going to be two years again but this time 765 840 minus 765 is going to be Let's just do it this way. Sometimes you get to the end of a long day of doing math. You just can't think clearly. So 75. And then we want to divide that by 2. And so we're going to get 37.5. And that's what we'll put in there. Okay, so finding slope. The average rate of change is just finding slope. So take the two points, find the change in the y over the change in the x. Fifty-two characteristics of functions. So uh, what we're going to be asked here is what kind of function is it? Is it linear, quadratic, cubic, radical, constant, or rational? Uh, now, linears are uh, basically x to the first power, right? So this 5x, but so y equals mx plus b. This definitely is linear. Uh, vertical intercept is going to be the negative 4. So it's the point, the, the value that's 6. So when x is 0, y is negative 4. Okay, uh, this one, again, you could say it's linear. Remember, it's really a horizontal line, but uh, this is a special one that we call a constant. When there is no variable, it's always 171. And again, its vertical intercept is when x is 0. Actually, it doesn't matter what x is, y will always be 171. So that's got to be the vertical intercept as well, the y-intercept there. 
uh, this is a characteristic quadratic. It's a square. Quadratics are squared, so it's x squared. It's quadratic. Uh, and again, it's this number that's by itself, because if you put in 0 for x, the first two terms go away. y is equal to 49. So when x is 0, y is 49. Oops, go the wrong way. There we go. That's not better. This is an example of a rational function. The rationals are fractions, so it's it's uh, that's what that is. And what is the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept, uh, vertical intercept, is when x equals zero. So we just put in zero for both of the x's, zero and zero. It's going to be two thirds. Uh, it's going to be actually negative two thirds, right? So again, put in zero for x. These answers always for these vertical intercepts always have to start with x being zero, and then y in this case will be negative two thirds. Okay, so if you plug in zero for x, you get whatever y is. Uh, this one is a square root. It's a radical radical. It's a type of radical. Okay. And what's the vertical intercept? Well, plug in 0 for x. So this is now just the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So when x is 0, y will be 5. That's all we're doing, plugging in 0 for x. That's the vertical intercept. And finally, this must be the one that's left over. It's not quadratic. It's a, to the third power. That's a cubic power. Same thing, plug in 0 for x, the first term becomes 0, 0 cubed is 0, 0 times 6 is 0, so that's all that, y is equal to 4. So what we have is when x is 0, y is equal to 4. So just kind of going through each of those. So be able to find the vertical intercept and identify type. A linear is just x to the first power, or with x with no power. Constant, there is no x coordinate or x uh, variable. It's just uh, the function equals a number. Quadratics have an x squared. Cubics have an x to the cubed. Radicals have a radical. And rationals are fractions. So let's look at number 3, 53. So now we've got the height of a rock. It's an applied problem. And we just really need to be able to read from this graph. Approximately the average rates of change over each of the following time intervals round your answers to two decimal places. So again, approximate. So from 0 to 30 seconds. So that's from here to here. So what we look at is what are the y values? There's this one to here. So I could pull off those points. And again, I've got to do sort of approximates uh, around your answers to two decimal places. OK. Um, so I don't know, that looks like not halfway. I would say that's like 37. So I would say this point is 30, 37. And this point here is 0, 10. And they want us to get approximately the average rates of change over each of the following time they're over on here. They don't give us a formula. That's really all we can do. Oh, here we go. We read. They tell us it gets a maximum of 37 feet. So I was pretty good with this 37. And again, we just use a slope formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. That's average rate of change. So what is that? That's 37 minus 10, taking the Y values right in the top. X values in the bottom. 30 minus 1, uh, 30 minus 0, sorry, from here. So that's 27 over 30. That's our rate of change. Um, and the units are going to be feet per second. So we get them right here, right? Y over the X. Feet per second and 27 divided by 30. And they want it rounded. Uh, to two decimal places, so 
So we'll put in 0 0.90. It's two decimal places. 30 seconds to 65 seconds. So again, they, they you know, what first seemed like a bit of a challenge is going to be okay. So we'll go from this point. So we use this point again, uh, 30 comma 37. And this is going to be 65 comma 0. That's the y value, right? So using slope, 37 minus 0 on the top, 30 minus 65 on the bottom. And again, you could reverse these if you want. Uh, we'll get a negative. It's, and notice it's got negative slope, so it should be negative. We get 37 on top and negative 35 on the bottom. So 37 over 35. We'll give us 1.06, right, to two decimal places, 1.06. And again, that is also in feet per second. Now from 0 to 60, um, then we use this first term, and again, it's still going to be negative because we could see it's going downhill. We were to connect this with the line, right? That's really what we're getting. That's that's the slope between these two. So we use the first one and the second one. So what you're going to get is your x, your y is going to be 10 minus zero. So 10 minus zero. And then since I use the 10 first, I'm going to use the, in the bottom, the x value, 0, minus 65. So that's 10 over negative 65. Um, let's see what that gives us. 10 divided by... 65 is 0 0.15, 0 0.15, and it's negative because it's got a negative, not equals, negative 0.15. And again, this is also in feet per second. to two decimal places. Let's see. 37 minus 0. And 30 minus 30, 65 is going to be 35. Let's try that again. Maybe, you know, some, if I remember this, um, sometimes there's this rounding error. So what we're going to do is we're not going to round properly. Oops, what did I do? Maybe there was some, maybe there was a entry error. 37 divided by 35. I, I put in 65. It's 1.06. I'm going to put in 1.05 and I bet you it gets me the right answer. I bet you it has rounded incorrectly. That's what happened last time, right? Well, still, Oh, I forgot the negative. Let me try one more time. It was probably just fine. I'll go back to your disparaging calculating tools. Now it's okay. It was Little Crow just forgot to put his negative in there. Okay. And here's the last two we're getting there. Again, from a graph, we want to find the average rate of change. So the average rate of change from 0 to 2. So from 0 to 2 here. So there's this point, 2 comma 0. That's one point. And the point here, 0 
comma 4. And that's kind of nice when you get like the x-intercept and y-intercept. Notice we can look, it's got to be negative, so I better remember to put my negative in there. Uh, take the y or minus 0 in the top, and the bottom take the x as 0 minus 2. So we get 4 over negative 2, which gives us a slope of negative 2. And as long as we, this is right, your answer is integer or reduced fraction. So, oops, I wanted to go there. Anyway, negative 2 is our answer. Negative 2. And one more question, and we've gotten all the way through the review. An average rate of change for this with these, okay. So what we're going to need to do is we need to find the y value for each of these. So we've got to plug in what is, uh, find the average rate of change over the interval from 7 to 20. So we know the x value starts at 7, so we have to plug that in for x, calculate this. Then we have to plug in the 20 for x, calculate that, and we'll have our two points. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with that. So 755 times 0.65 raised, that's clear, what's going on? So 755 times 0.65 and use my exponent tool raised to the seventh power. And so I get this point seven comma uh, thirty-seven point zero one one eight two. I, I was gonna look I don't know how what they want us to round it to, so I, I just have enough that we can work with that. Then we're going to plug in 20. We use the same thing, 755 10.65 raised to the 20. So let's clear that. 755 times 0.65. Now it's a decreasing exponential, so it should actually be smaller, right? Because, and it is. So the point we're going to get is 20. Uh, 0.1368 4. Let's write a bunch of decimal places. And then after doing that, we now want to find the average rate of change. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth as needed. So when I'm going to do the nearest hundredth, I'm actually going to go out to three decimal places. And then, um, so then I can round. Okay. So we take the y values on top. I'm going to take the larger y, 37.0118. Actually, I'm going to just a little bit, I've got four decimal places, minus 0 0.1368, so that I don't have to round it. Just, just going to make it more accurate. Over 37 goes with a 7, so then it's going to be 7 minus 20 on the back end. Notice we'll get a negative in the denominator, 7 minus 20 is negative 13. And in the top, we'll do this uh, subtraction of 30, 36 point something. And we'll just, uh, since we've already got, well, let's clear it. So we're going to go 37.0118 minus 0.13. Six, eight. And just like I said, we're going to get 36.875. Um, and it's kind of taken because the eights, that's why I went out to four decimal places. We're going to round it to two decimal places. So, uh, and then we're going to take that number divided by 13.
Okay, and since we know it's negative, so it's going to be negative 2.837. Because we've got this 5 here, we round with 6. I think it's three decimal places, right? If not, we can... Oh, nearest hundredth. So actually, this was a 6, so we round 2.84. Negative 2.84. There we go. And we're all good. So can we use the calculator, plug it in, we find the, the we've got, given the x values, we find the y values, and then we use the slope formula. So we've done this multiple times, so you, I'm sure you'll see at least a, this a couple times on the final exam. So that's the end. Uh, go back and review over this, and then you're you're well prepared for the final.